we take a look at some of the newest and strangest engines out there. At number 7, the Coaxial. A company has taken the idea of the old cam engine, which was used in torpedoes, and refined the design to a more versatile engine, which could be utilized in anything from compressors to hybrid vehicles. Some noticeable improvements include multiple cam rod points, adjustable frame closures, and the ability to synchronously move opposite pistons. In theory, the coaxial should be able to handle different types of fuels. As of right now, the company has built several prototypes and are pretty close to building a fully runnable engine, which will definitely be interesting to see. At number 6, the MA250. One of the strangest prototypes out there stems from Avati engines. It is a four-stroke, rotating single cylinder connected to a self-balancing rod. The intake and exhaust system utilize rotational movement of the powertrain to eliminate the need for a cam shaft. This means that it has less parts, and it's quite a bit lighter than a typical engine. But reliability is also hinged on the gearing. A portable 23-pound variant produces around 15 horsepower at 22 foot-pounds of torque, which is not too bad at all. At number 5, the CV engine. The piston and rod rack assembly are one integrated component in alignment, so less energy is used to propel the full cycle. And this modified crankshaft allows this engine to have two times the power stroke. There is also less friction on the cylinder walls due to this linear alignment. However, this also means that the crankshaft would have to be redundant due to this linear reciprocating motion. As of right now, the company does have a 38cc demonstrator. At number 4, the X100 series. A new 3-steam adaptive cycle engine is being developed for next generation fighter jets. It has this ability to adjust bypass ratio and fan pressures to increase either fuel efficiency or thrust, and it can do this by implementing a third bypass stream around the engine. This means that it can control the amount of airflow into the core for more performance or through this third stream for added fuel efficiency. The engine should also have adequate power generation for directed energy weapons in the future. Estimates project an increased thrust of 10% and fuel efficiency of around 25%. We get to number 3, and it's the Pulsar Fusion. Now this particular company is developing quite a few different engines. One notable prototype is their orbital satellite engine, which is a type of plasma propulsion. These thrusters have impulse but low thrust, and currently the company is working on a variant that can achieve 30 km per second at 5 kW. Basically it would be perfect for low thrust maneuvers in spacecraft, but it's not going to get you into low earth orbits or anything like that. Furthermore, the company is also working on a direct fusion drive with a tokamak design which can provide over 2 MW. Theoretically, these direct fusion drives can provide thrust and electric power for interplanetary spacecraft. There are quite a few different institutions working on this type of engine, so it's going to be very interesting to see what's developed within the next couple of years. Now we get into a weird configuration called the Tiled Ionic Liquid Electrospray Engine. It runs on an inert ionic liquid salt stored in a low pressure container, kind of like ink stored in a cartridge. Each chip is arranged with microscopic ion emitters, and this ionic fluid is wicked to the ends via capillary action. An electric grid accelerates the ions, and this provides thrust to the craft. The company has made a lot of progression with these chips with their Tile 3 proprietary system with a total impulse of 755 newton seconds. But this type of engine works in numbers, so it can be scaled up with a numerous amount of chips, thus providing a versatile engine which could be used in a variety of spacecraft. Before we get to number one, I just wanted to cover a controversial engine which is making waves but has yet to be verified. It's called the Mach Effect Drive and the concept is fairly simple. Thankfully, a YouTuber called Monomorphic has made a really good video of this. And basically, the center of mass changes location dynamically in comparison with the overall system. And as a result of this, the geometry shifts. These are very small units and the thrust is around 100 millinewtons. However, this does equate to 10 newtons per kilowatt, 
It is currently being tested at several laboratories, but the problem is eliminating outside variables which could be throwing things off a bit. So is this the magical drive which will provide us flying cars and spaceships? Well, to be honest, I don't really know and I'm a little bit skeptical of the claim. But either way, it's a very interesting development and we'll just have to wait and see if it is actually verified. We get to the Omega One. I have covered a lot of engines, but this one definitely takes the prize for being unique. It has a pair of chambers and rotors mounted on two shafts running in pairs. The stacked rotors are coupled with synchronized gears so that they can rotate in opposite directions. The engine can be stacked, thus leading to bigger variants. But the standard Omega-1 just weighs 35 pounds and theoretically it can produce 160 horsepower at 170 foot-pounds of torque. This type of engine would also be able to redline at 25,000 RPM. Not only that, it would also be completely sealed, so it can be useful in a lot of aerospace applications without being subjected to fuel air ratios. Ultimately, it comes down to building a real working prototype, but this is definitely a weird and dramatic engine which is being developed. Anyways, I would like to know what you think about all these different engines. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.